What is going on, YouTube? Uh, thank you for watching another episode of TK Aquariums here. I messed up. I forgot to record a whole lot. Um, not like big fish tank stuff and whatnot, but more of the nano ones. Uh, I did move uh, my beta tanks today. Uh, a couple of the little ones. I'm still in the process of trying to figure out where I exactly want to put them for sure. Uh, but I do. I will show you a couple of them right here. So I have a couple in this cooler and a couple in that cooler over there. Right, right. But something I wanted to show you guys today. Uh, like I said, <laughs> got to get used to this YouTube thing, you know. I got to get used to, you know, keeping you guys posted and keep you guys informed on everything I'm doing. But a little sneak peek of what I'm doing with my Fluval Flex that I moved from my bedroom. Oh, yeah. I'm going to describe a couple things to you guys this afternoon. Actually, let me see if... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so now I can describe everything inside of this tank. Because it looks like I can see everything in the camera angle. Awesome. So we got a little bit of water sprite right over here. That's going to be in the back corner. I'm going to have the flow coming out. I kind of want that to be pushed a little bit. We also have in this corner over here, lemon bocapa. Uh, if you actually smell it outside of water, it smells just like lemons. It's really, really cool. Not a very strong smell, but you do have that faintness to it. All throughout in this back area, I'm going to have that looks like this is Cryptocorn when dead eye. Then I have a Ulviches uh, bulb planted right here. I have that Anubius Nana up top and then Petite down below. So Anubius Nana and Anubius Nana Petite down below. And then in this corner, I'm thinking about throwing some Dwarf Sag over there. Uh, or Dwarf Sagittarius. And I might actually buy another portion or two of that and actually be tossing it in there. Um, I do have a log that's running across mainly for the Anubiuses so it could kind of take hold and go down into the rooting systems and stuff like that. I also have two little pieces of wood over here with, um, moss, but the moss kind of looks like it disintegrated a little bit. I'm not even going to lie about that. Um, but yeah, so right now I am setting this back up. I am going to be installing the... Back in this area, I'm going to be installing the sponge filters in both sides. I like to have that extra mechanical filtration. But on one side, I have bio rings or bio balls, whatever you want to call it. So I have a biological media. And then I'm also going to have a chemical media, which is going to be the carbon that's going to be inside of there. Then the mechanical filtration is going to be the sponges. That's going to be removing all the debris out of the water. Um, something else I didn't show you guys is that I actually tested the water here. I am extremely excited. The water is actually really good compared to, you know, other places. I am running on well water, so I was expecting extremely high nitrites, or excuse me, nitrates, um, which is the conversion of nitrites and ammonia that go into nitrates. Uh, I could explain the nitrogen cycle a whole nother day, and I'll get more in depth to that. Right now, I'm trying to get moving so these plants don't dry out. So with that being said, you know, I did write down, or I didn't even write it down, but I did do the water testings here. Uh, the pH actually came out a 7.2. Very happy about that, you know. Not super hard where it's like uh, 8.0 into 8.8 .8 or anything like that. Where like cichlids would really like that type of stuff. Like 8.4. Uh, even salt water stuff. Sometimes they like the high 8s. Uh, I'm a little, eh, I like to dial it down a little bit. I like the 7.0 neutral zone. Uh, it's very, very easy to keep a lot of different things within that zone. Um... Uh, and then anything low, like 6.0 and stuff like that, that's acidic. That's acidic. Uh, that's kind of toxic to the fish. You do not want anything lower than 6.0. That is a no-go. If your tank is running at like a 5.2, you need to teach the world what you're doing because that is impressive. If you're have running a fish tank at a 5.2, whoa. <laughs> no, I'm joking though. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I didn't even need to test in the high pH range. I did it just in case, just to make sure. It obviously came out the lowest on there on the chart, which is 7.4. Uh, and then came out 7.2 is what I got on the reading. Ammonia, zero. Very happy about that. Nitrite, zero. Happy about that. Now, nitrate, that came out at 5.0 parts per million. That is very good. I have a large plant load. And these plants are going to be pulling those nitrates out of the water, using them as extra nutrients and stuff like that for them to be able to flourish very beautifully. But with that being said, you know, it, do, it will take, you know, 
a little bit of time for it to adjust and everything like that but the water quality in general is superb um i am going to be putting all uh, my beta fish in here the one that was originally in here uh mainly because i do have him inside of a large large vase or vase and uh i'm going to be putting that water into here that way it establishes itself much quicker i'm not really shocking him into anything i am going to you know make sure i keep an eye on him for at least a good hour or two just to make sure he stays in good health because if not i'm gonna have to pull him back out bring him back home with me take the drive and whatnot but with that being said though um Everything came out really good. I mean, I have all my medications and stuff here in case of anything happens. I also have water dechlorinator, which I don't really need anymore. <laughs> but because <laughs> I'm running off of well water, if you know that city water, you definitely need to put chlorines. And actually, it's really cool because right by my Fluval Flex on my workbench, I have the water system right here. Which is going to be running like the RO water and all that stuff. I have RO water here as well. And if you don't know what RO means, that means reverse osmosis. That means it is very purified. <laughs> it is really good water. The water that I use for the tanks though is coming from the wells. Um, but yeah. Don't forget guys, if you like what you're watching right now and you, you know want to keep up with everything, subscribe, okay? Like this video, and if you have any questions about anything in your tank or any of the fish you have or anything at all, leave a comment down below. I'll get to it as soon as I see it. I am a little bit busy with this whole move, but I promise you one thing. I will read all my comments once I start getting the comments. Yes, I know. I just did that to myself. But uh, don't forget, comment down below and hit that bell icon so you guys are notified every time I make a new video. But with that being said, I'll see you guys on the next one. Ski! One more thing, completely forgot. Something really important that I should be teaching you now instead of in another video because I'm currently doing it right now. I kept my sponges, my media, my carbon, all of that stuff inside of a bag and kept the water in here. Once this stuff dries out, all the beneficial bacteria that you've been working so hard to build is gone. So I kept it in a Ziploc bag, made sure it continuously stayed wet. You do not want it to dry out. Like I said, if you let it dry out, it will restart your system. You're going to be having to go through the whole nitrogen cycle again. And like I said, for that one, we'll stay tuned for that. All right. Keep watching, guys. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell icon down below. All right. And I know, I know, I know I said once or twice when we were ready that I was done making this video, but it's already a little late. We work a little hard on this and it's actually clearing up now. Don't want to show you too much of it. You know, if you want to see that, you just pause the video right there and, you know, check that out. But also I did set up all my beta tanks. As you can see, I have spigots on all of them. Mainly because quick, fast, easy water changes. Not only that, but since the water siphoning from down below, all the debris and all that stuff that's sitting inside the gravel is going to be kind of pulled out of there. And it's going to fall right out the spigot. Um, what I do is I end up taking established fish tank water. So when this 75 right here is going to be set up, I'm going to be able to use the 75's water for those. Currently, I actually use a little bit of, excuse me, I use the well water. They already had some water in there, so that way it was only like a water change. Along with that, I did put a little bit of stability, which is going to, you know, kind of help the fish out. Put some beneficial bacteria in there, you know, make sure that fish isn't going to be too stressed or anything like that. But I am going to have the lights out here. I'm going to be dimming that light over there. I'll be back in tomorrow, and when I do walk in, hopefully everything looks good. Thank you guys again so very much for watching, guys. I know I keep saying this so much. These are three separate videos into one. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great day, great night, sleep tight, and see you guys in the next one.